Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to this last session of today's Chile conference. Um, this is, I have to say, this is one of the coldest rooms that I've been in in my years of going to conferences, but that's why it's great being one of the cool kids with a white jacket. Um, the, um, if we look into the future, right, then the thing that we can focus on is the next World Wide Web conference, which is in Sydney, where undoubtedly the temperature will be a little lower than here, um, or higher, or whatever. But, you know, looking into the future is only one dimension of time. Um, looking into the past is the other. And one of the things that happened in the past, about 50 years ago, as we uh, uh, learned from uh, Vin Cerf on the um, first day of the conference, was 50 years of internet. Now, our good friends, you know, the internet was not just invented by ACM people, and our good friends over at IEEE are having an I-50 celebration, um, a virtual celebration of 50 years internet. It's a live stream. It'll um, happen pretty short term, Sunday, May 19th, which is uh, pretty soon, two days from now, um, uh, Pentecost Sunday, and um, it starts at 9 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. Now, if you're wondering, what is an I, uh, you know, a, um, uh, a, a virtual stream hosted by uh, IEEE look like? Well, there's a promotional video that's going to let us know. In 1969, humanity has just taken its first pioneering step towards a more connected world. Two computers of the predecessor to the internet have been directly linked for the first time. Five years later, in 1974, Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn shared an architecture and philosophy to support open design for the sharing of information. The idea of internet was born. Today, five billion people are connected. AI can build whole new worlds, but leaves some of us behind. We've shared the knowledge of the stars, but allowed dangerous lies. We're preserving our heritage and celebrating human culture. But will we let our individuality slip away? Where will AI and the internet be in the next 50 years? Without you, the future of the internet and AI is lost. We need all of us to make the internet and AI more people-centered. Let's shape our future together. Okay, now that is an IEEE video, right? Um, no, but it's not at all. It's, uh, it's people-centered inter internet, and Hadi, who has done a great job up till now, is telling me this is an IEEE promo video for um, this uh, gig on Sunday. But, um, you know, life is just full of little surprises. Um, there are two things we'd like to do in this session. Actually, there are three things we'd like to do in this session. One is, as uh, is typical at all uh, ACM events that are sponsored by SIGWeb, we try to have a, a town hall meeting in which we can tell you something about ACM and we can tell you something about ACM SIGWeb, who is the sponsor of this conference. Now, you know, sponsor of this conference. Actually, we're the sponsor of ACM SIGWeb um, because that's the way the, uh, not, you know, the flows sometimes work. Um, but organizationally, we fall under uh, ACM SIGWeb. Um, and um, I'd like to invite Professor Erwin King, who is the vice chair of ACM SIGWeb and one of our own here from the web community and the web uh, steering committee to um, give us a chat about what um, um, 
SIG Web is all about, and I think you're set to go. You can, you got your slides ready to go? Yeah. And, well, it's your talk, man. You should know, right? So. Yes. Thank you, Dick. It's been a long conference, yes. Uh, let me just do this slideshow. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I see still many of you are here. This is pretty exciting. Um, we're, uh, you know, having a great run up to the finale. Uh, I am the vice chair for ACM SIG Web, so I'd like to share with you a few uh, happening. Uh, as you know, ACM, the structure of ACM, you know, has a lot of uh, SIG, SIGs, special interest groups, and one of which is the SIG Web. This conference, in fact, belongs to the SIG Web. And, and Elko uh, Herder is the chair, I'm the vice chair, and also we have a secretary, Alexandra Bonici. Bonici. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, contact Elko or myself. Um, so I'd just like to share with you that uh, WebConf is not the only conference that SIGWeb holds. And as you can see, Hypertext Social Media, Doc, Engineering, Web Science Conference, they are all 100% belonging to the SIGWeb. We have a number of co-sponsored uh, events as well. Uh, UMAP, User Modeling Adaptation and Personalization, and also um, Wisdom, Web Search and Data Mining, as well as uh, uh, this is a CKM, CIKM, from Conference on Information and Knowledge Management, and also the Joint Conference on Digital Library, JCDL. These are all uh, co-sponsored, and one of them, uh, we, are, we are doing this with IEEE. They are also in cooperation conferences. Uh, so here are some of them, and I won't go uh, through each one in detail, okay? And i just like to share with you, in fact, I didn't put this down because I just found out that we have over 1,300 people. So as you can see, uh, so, so uh, the WebCon actually is the largest conference in the SIG web. And you have these uh, uh, um, numbers, uh, attendees from other conferences in SIG web. Uh, these are appointed executive committee of SIGWeb, and they are liaisons to these conferences. So if you have um, uh, any questions or inquiries, uh, please contact them. You are welcome to contact them directly or contact us as well. Okay. Uh, I'd like to just share with you that SIGWeb has a fair access initiative, and that really gives uh, a, a reduced fees or free registration for developing and underrepresented countries, okay? So you have, if you know people, you have colleagues who are in developing or underrepresented countries, make sure to let them know that we have this uh, uh, initiative available so that they could uh, apply for a reduced or free registration. Um, this is the SIG web publicity, and uh, I'm very happy to see many of you. I mean, you might not know that we have website, we have uh, media, Twitter, uh, social media presence through Twitter, through Facebook, and LinkedIn. And this will be the, one of the best ways that you will be able to actually know what's going on, uh, you know, uh, uh, about the web and SIG web in particular. So all you had to do uh, is to really join uh, and follow us. And uh, so I will show you, the, I, I guess, the contact. I'll leave this actually with the organizers that you could download this and uh, you'll be able to actually access all the information through the sigweb.org, okay? And uh, here are more publicity and just uh, some screenshots and our web conference uh, poster is is shown here. Um, so I guess my take home uh, message to you guys is this. The web conference, this conference is really the core of SIG web, okay? And my question to you is, are you a SIG web member? Okay, if you're not, 
uh, please uh, join us, okay? Because then you will get the most recent update and news about our community, okay? Uh, some of the actions items that you could help is to check your uh, ho uh, check the homepage, the SIG web, follow us on social media, and contact the steering committee members, and also attend conference and become a volunteer of SIG web or the web conference. And with that, I think my first part is over. So this is to join the SIG web. Okay. Um, I'd like to share with you a second item on my mind, and um, this is on the ACN Open Access Initiative. How many of you actually have heard of this ACM Open Access Initiative? Can you raise your hand? I don't, oh, okay, quite a bit, quite a number of people. Okay, so um, I'm going to just share a few things about this ACM Open Access uh, initiative. And um, so prior to this, we have been working on putting all our publications and materials on the digital library, right? But in, back in uh, two, uh, 2020, uh, 2020, around that time, uh, the ACN Council actually had this initiative, a five-year plan to convert that model to an open access model where anybody will be able to access all the ACN content for free. However, the question is, where does the money come from? Okay, the money either could come from, uh, you know, paying the digital library subscription, which is present, represent the old model, or doing this open access where nobody actually pays for the access, but people will be paying for the publication, okay? Two ways to do this. One is that each individual will pay for the publication, and that amount would be $700 to $1,000 in 2026. However, this open access initiative will allow institutions to subscribe to this open access model in a, in a very sustainable way. And I will share with you how they do this, okay? The key benefit of open access model, it will create a greater readership and citation of uh, research and uh, furthering the field of computer science. It will also rebalance the ACN's revenue so that we could better serve because some of the, some of the less um, resourceful institutions may even get this for free. Lastly, for all the authors, you will have increased access, increased usage, and increased citation, right? This is good for us. So um, uh, I could give you a few more points is that many of the government and granting agencies, they also mandate us to have an open access policy because they are paying for uh, the grant, funding the grants, and they want their output to be accessible by everyone, okay? Authors, librarians, they also want this to be open. And it makes sense uh, to, uh, and, and data shows that opening up this to the world will benefit that research community as a whole. However, we must do this in a sustainable way, right? Because ACM, um, uh, we should uh, make sure that we can do this uh, in a way that there's still a, a, a profit to be, to be made, okay? So let me just share with you, as you can see on these uh, tables, the first one is the publication type you could see that the usage, and this study is based on the um, article published in the ACM Digital Library between 2013 and 2022. By having this open access, it will increase 2.78 times for journal articles, 3.7 times for conference, and so on and so forth. On the last row, uh, OA is open access row, you could see that average citation per article will be increased from 15 
to 25. And this really gave us the impetus to go ahead and, and transition into uh, uh, this open model. However, I'm not going to go through every single one, okay? Uh, but uh, what I'd like to highlight is this, that the institute, all the institutions will only pay a annual price, one price. It doesn't matter, um, um, it, it basically one price, but this price will be a 10-tier system. And I'm going to show that to you a little bit later. And the way that we do it is also is sensible. We do not take each individual year, the fluctuation, but we will have a moving average of three years. So you sign a three-year con contract, and that moving average, what we will observe and, uh, and, and calculate it for your next, uh, uh, next contract. Okay, so all these things uh, basically um, uh, yeah, give us the, 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 again, the impetus to move onto this uh, open access model. So here's really a, 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 a ten, 10 tier system that we have. If your institution publishes between zero and three articles per year, uh, you might not even be paying. Four to seven is $9,500. Remember this, this is access to the whole, uh, whole library for free, once you pay this price. All the way up to 75 and plus, you're paying in 95,000, okay? So this is a, a, a very um, refined a system, 10 tiers, and uh, uh, we believe that this will serve the community well. Um, so how are we doing so far? Okay, so we are kind of in the middle of this transition. We need to May by December 31st, 2025. So by January 1st, 2026, everything will go into this open access. If your institution does not have this subscription, each individual paper that is published in the ACM um, journal or ACN conference, it will be you will be charged an uh, author fee. Okay, I'm sorry. The yeah, including the conference papers. So the yeah. best way, yeah. it, it, including this conference, because this is an ACM conference. So make sure that you talk to your librarians, you talk to your uh, department chair, you talk to your university officials about this. Okay, and in fact, I'm, I'll be sending out a letter, including a template, if you would like to uh, contact them, because that template will help you to uh, explain what is happening. Uh, this is, was done a, a couple of months ago. Our goal is to have 2,500 institutions sign up, and currently we have about half. We got about 50 percent. Okay, so we got a year and a half to go before 2026, and we need to actually uh, accelerate this process. As you can see, the darkened parts are the parts already are heavily involved. And then the lighter part and the gray parts are the ones that are not, okay? So one big chunk is, uh, you know, China. So for those of you uh, coming from China, I hope that you will be able to actually talk to your university librarians and uh, university officials uh, and, and let them know about this, this thing. We could help you. At an ACM, we'll be able to help you to, uh, to, um, to, to get on uh, this initiative. Okay, uh, we are definitely, this initiative is, is committed to e uh, equity and inclusion. Okay, so uh, re uh, Research for Life, uh, EIFL uh, countries, these uh, have free access in OA publications, okay? And uh, they, again, they are waiver programs depending on the financial uh, situation of your institutions. Uh, we have to make an assessment, but the ACM is, is here to help, uh, okay, to move everybody to the open access model. Uh, ACM will continue to collaborate with consortia, institutions, founders, and then members and regional councils, okay, to, uh, to promote this uh, open access model. There's still a lot of work to, to be done, so um, 
uh, one of the other things that we're committed to do is committed to transparency, okay? So do not think that this is like a, we're making lots of profit, okay? We want to make sure that this is a viable, sustainable, so we open up the uh, financial books to the public. Okay, uh, ICPS stands for International Conference Proceeding Series, okay? Now, the WebConf has open access proceeding for since the first conference already, okay? But you are able to access other ACN conferences right now through this for free, okay? And remember this, by 2026, your access still will be free, but you may have to pay what your institution needs to pay. Okay, um, uh, let me see now. What we have learned uh, from ICPS transition will help us uh, for other ACM conferences and workshop for 2026. Remember this, uh, ACM is or will be the first major computer science publisher to transition to 100% open access. We're very proud of that because even other major publishers are not, are not keeping up the pace, but we are the first one. We believe this will help authors and also the community. And for this, I ask you to join with ACM in, in promoting this open access. So my last remark is really uh, ACM open access will increase the access usage and citation. And we have already started with the ICP uh, PS series, and we hope to finish the transition by December 31st, 2025. And um, last but not least, ACM is ready to help. So if you have any questions or inquiries, please let me know. Some of the things you could do is take this to your chairs and share your concerns and ask questions. With that, thank you very much. Okay, you know, I used to think that large language models were complicated, but after seeing this 10 tier model, right? Um, as, as is mentioned, you know, the key thing here is unlike what 50 years of internet have imprinted in our brains, information is not free, and information access is not free, and somebody's gotta pay somewhere to have information organized, processed, categorized, and made available to us. And that can be either the author when a paper is submitted, um, or it can be an institution that can say, I've got a thousand authors on my staff, um, I'm gonna pay one fee, but you know, at the end of the day, it's got to be paid by someone. And what we don't want is to have the end user who's going to read this article actually do the payment. So that, uh, that's what open access is all about. Um, does anybody have any questions about this process or about SIGWeb or about ACM? OK. Sorry? To Dubai realize it will hit them? I, um, I think the answer is yes. But the answer is probably maybe, and there's even a small chance that the answer is no. But you can choose one of those three. Right. We will let them know. OK. Um, there's a reason we, uh, we don't give Wendy a microphone. So, uh, OK, Erwin, thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Now, while, while um, Aaron makes his way down, one of the things that, as a, a steering committee member for this conference series, um, I'd like to take just a few minutes to answer any questions or to hear any comments or to get feedback on any proposals that you may have known. One of the things that we talked about at our meeting this afternoon was um, the fact that a lot of presentations lack a certain energy. They have people who are reading text, um, and 
it doesn't really engage in discussion. At the same time, if you go to the poster session, there are all sorts of people who are huddled around a poster actively talking about the work that's taking place. Um, and I think that one part of that could be that around a poster, people have groups of people who often speak the same language, and it's a different language that they have to use in presenting a paper. And one of the thoughts we had this afternoon is maybe we should transition to a model where presenters of papers can present their work in their own language, and then to have translation tools, and there are a number out there, do real-time tra translation of that for me into Dutch or English, maybe for Laurent into French. Um, um, Irwin is multilingual, so you know who knows what he would like it to have. Dame Wendy would like to have some, finally, some proper English, right, um, around here, so that um, that's something that I'd like you to think about. If you haven't filled in your survey yet, uh, in the comments section, maybe you can, you can uh, give that some thought, because that may be an innovation that'll help make the presenters relax and get a, a bit more of an interactive uh, conference uh, going. Um, are there any other issues, questions, comments, or things that people would like to raise? If not, I would like to invite the volunteers, all of the volunteers who are here, to come up on stage for a, a, a group picture together. One needs to come on up. Okay, come on up. It's, you know. The, Now, I've, I was told there are going to be about 78 of them in total. Most of them are working. Most of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we get the ones outside in, or are they, everyone's around breaking up stuff or uh, doing things? Many of us who attend the conference see stuff happening. They see uh, sessions being uh, set up and, and uh, registration desks being manned and all sorts of, of things being organized. But a lot of that organization takes place through a large group of volunteers that every year come to our conference. Some of the volunteers are local here from the Singapore community. There's also a core of international volunteers that have been coming to the conference, some of them since uh, 1994, to help run the ACM web conference. and. Um, uh, if you're a volunteer, if you're a local volunteer, you can also try and get into the international uh, chain if, uh, if you want to do more conferences. But these people are absolutely essential to uh, keeping this conference working. So while they're uh, posing for a picture, I'll get out of the way. And what you can do is give them a big hand. Okay, it's clear that the volunteer who owns the camera does not trust other people using this camera. So, um, now slightly less important than the volunteers, but still an active role is this year's organizing committee. So, Tat Seng and Hadi and the others of those of you who are around the local organizing committee, if you're here as well, I'd like to have you come up on stage and um, after, whoops. 
Okay, don't be shy. Don't be shy. Come on up. So It's more than the three of you who've done all this work, but... This is your chance to be on an official photograph, right? So this is... Uh, Okay, well, well, we'll have to Photoshop them in. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, and to the three of you, on behalf of the rest of the whole local organizing team, from the steering committee, but I think also on behalf of all of the participants, thank you very much for really organizing a first-class event. We had a really fine week here in uh, Singapore. The weather has been very dramatic. Um, the conference content has been good. The social events were, were, uh, were wonderful. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in a more relaxed mode in Sydney yep. in uh, next year. Thank but you. thanks. Yeah. And with that, I'd like to close this year's event. Have a good trip back. Thanks to all of you for coming. And we hope to see you next year in Sydney. Okay. To the camera and the AV guys and everybody who also put out just a wonderful uh, technical presentation, uh, whether you were here in the room or watching it in your hotel room or watching it worldwide, um, nice job on their parts too. Everybody have a good trip back. Okay.